All righty. Y'all let me know if you can hear me. Let me pop in here. It's having a little bit of technical difficulties like this. Right, be, right before I popped on, my internet went down to like one megabyte and it's going back between like 20 and, and 10. So you guys let me know if the live stream's okay because the internet's like really wonky. I might have to postpone this till tomorrow. Penny Norman, how are you? So bummed it's starting. Oh no, it started snowing again. I yes, Mike, I'm glad you're coming. Okay, cool. Yeah, and uh, what do you call it? We'll call it, we'll jump on here. I just want to see how everyone's doing. Uh, let you know, I've got a lot of uh, downspouts going out. A lot of people ordered them and uh, it's, um, what do you call it? If you notice, I can show green. If you guys watch some of my other live streams, and I had a little green screen behind me. You couldn't, I couldn't show this because it was, uh, it'd be invisible. And they have a blue screen. Now, this is just, you can see the little line here. I found a sleeping bag in our stuff over with our blankets. And it's blue. It was bright blue. And it actually turned out to be the right color blue. I don't have it set just right. See the blue around my hand. And, uh, but uh, anywho, I can do this because I'm in my garage right now. But I can actually show you guys stuff with my green screen. So that was pretty cool. Like I tried to show this last week, remember, and it was like invisible. So I think I got that straightened out. Uh, Darvin, how are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Jim, Alejo, Linda, how are you all doing? Let's see. And where's everybody from? I know we usually put that. I can't remember. All's good here in Scotland. Whoa. All the way in Scotland. Pretty cool. Um, let's see. Yeah. So, um, what do you call it? Like I said, I've got stuff going out. I just want to let everybody know it's going to be for the people here in America. I'm sorry I can't ship all over uh, the world. I know a lot of people have been asking me. I did ship one to Canada. It was a real pain and it cost like 50 bucks for uh, shipping. But uh, usually, you know, it's in the United States and some people have been asking, you know, for other places. But um, I'm having trouble just keeping it up, you know, with people here in the United States. And uh, because of everything that's going on, I hope you all are doing well, uh, you know, start off with, you know, everybody, because this is this is a worldwide thing that's going on. You know, usually we come on and, and talk about something that's like, you know, us in a state or country or something. This is like worldwide right now that's happening to everybody. So I hope I hope everyone's doing all right. And, uh, you know, I just, you know, the times like this got me thinking, you know, the, this is, you know, this is when people should be growing some of their own food. You know, we can't get to the grocery store if you do. People are wiping everything out. Um, stores, the shelves are, are bare. Um, and if you could just walk out back, you know, to get, you know, your greens and, and some of your veggies and that out back, you know, then that's cool. And you don't have to worry about trying to stockpile things, you know, like your dry goods, like dried beans, um, uh, toilet paper, and stuff like that. You know, that if you, you had your stuff growing out back, you could just go out there and just pick it. I'm in a little bit of a, a pickle as far as my garden goes, because, you know, nobody was really expecting all of this to ramp up like this. And as you all know, it's spring. I think uh, who is that? Penny said Ohio, Indiana. Cool. Uh, she said it just started snowing again there. So we're, we're getting ready for spring. So what I did was I want to show everybody how to start everything right from the get right from the, the start. So I pretty much cleaned out my garden all of my downspouts. I've got a little bit left in my NFT system, like the strawberries is still there. I'm going to do a video on strawberries. Um, but the rest of it, I cleaned it out. The, the big, let's see, let's see if I can pop a picture up here. You guys know what I'm talking about. The, all the um, milk cartons that we had all the broccoli greens in. I cleaned all of that out. Let me see if I can pop a picture up here real quick. Yeah, that, well, that's me. That right there, you know, which turned into that other picture. Where is it? You know, like all of those broccoli greens in there. I cleaned all of that out and uh, all of the downspouts and everything. And I thought, that, um, all right, we're going to go ahead and grow some microgreens. And we're going to I'm going to walk people through that. Too. I might do it on the live stream and just go ahead and get all these containers out and go ahead and set those up and we'll pop them in. And then what I'll do is we'll follow along like in real time so you guys can see how long it takes for the microgreens to grow 
because when I do a video, you know, we usually us, us people like on YouTube and everything, we like to do a video. We like to, you know, film the different days and, and get a project all filmed. And then we edit it and you guys kind of see the whole progression. Um, I was thinking in live, this would be kind of cool if I went ahead and just planted these out with you. We put them up a couple of days later, do just a little update. I just come live. We can check everything out and watch how it grows and then how long it takes for them to get long enough to plant them in the downspouts and then do that with you all. So I cleaned out all the downspouts and and got everything ready. And then I didn't know all of this was going to go on. And and somebody else who was here, Matt, who's usually in the chat or, or in our group and everything, he texted me and said, you know, hey, this is a good time for, you know, like uh, keep on growing garden, you know, to, you know, at times like this to have all of that out there. And I was like, yeah, it, it would be. I said, I, I kind of uh, harvested everything. I was getting ready to start over because I wanted to go through the motions with you all. So it would be nice if I had it all out there right now, but basically it's kind of bare and, you know, I'll be starting to microgreens. I've got a couple grown that, that we eat ourselves, but I don't have a lot of them out there right now because I wanted to go through that with everyone too. You know, all, everyone, especially like all the beginners, because we've had a lot of people um, join the channel, you know, in the last six months and some of them haven't seen all of this. So I want to go ahead and start right from the beginning and show you how easy it is and how much time it takes too, because, you know, video is a little deceiving. I can make a video and it could take me like an hour and I can make it look like 10 minutes in a video. So I kind of want to do a couple of live shows and walk through it with everyone in real time and then have questions. My wife's going to help me. She'll, she'll actually be manning the uh, laptop and watching the questions and comments and, uh, uh, you know, manning the show. And I'll actually um, be doing the, the live show. And then that way, People can ask questions and we can do it in real time. And if you all want to do it at home at, at the same time, I think that'd be pretty cool, too. But that's what's happened with my um, uh, my garden. I cleaned it all out, getting ready for this. So, you know, I'm still going to do that. But it would be nice that right now when the stuff's getting cleared out at the grocery store, if I could go out, you know, we do have a couple of greens. So I've got one little ladder system. You know, there, there's some stuff for us to, to pick and eat out there. But uh, what do you call it? We've got a lot, to, lot to grow. All right, who else we got here? Argentina, cool. Kentucky, Fernando from Miami. I grew up in Miami, Fernando. If you know, uh, uh, let's see, um, Opalaca is where I was um, raised, and I was born in Hialeah. I don't know how it's all changed. I'm 50 years old. I was when you know when I was uh, uh, born till I was about 14. It's down in Miami. I have strawberries I purchased cool that are growing in the bag. I wish I could get them started. Oh, they're growing in the bag. Yeah, I hate I hate that. And, and this is the time of spring when you get really anxious. You know, you, you know, spring's coming and you want you want to get your garden, especially you guys up north. I mean, down here in Florida, pretty much when the frost is gone. You know what? Next week, we're going to be up to 95 degrees. Isn't that crazy? It was uh, it's just March and we're already up to almost 100. The, the heat index would be about 100. That's just crazy. Um, I was just wondering about you yesterday. Oh, cool. Were you? Yeah, I hope everyone's doing all right, too. You know, I'm worried about everybody. You know, it, it, it's kind of a, a funky time we're all going through. I hope everybody's doing OK. Great idea in real time for sprouts to microgreens. Cool. Appreciate that. That's what that's what I was thinking. Now, we, see, when I started my channel three years ago, not a lot of people were live streaming. I wasn't live streaming. I was just making videos, uploading them. I was thinking now that we have this capability where we can come on and just just talk, walk through the motions. We'll do it. We'll do it in the garden. And um, what do you call it? And then we'll come back like in a couple of days, you know, and we'll be planting them out. And I think you all be amazed because usually if you plant transplants and they're small, you usually don't take them and mess with them, you know, till they're they're pretty big because you, they're real tender and, and fragile. Um, but when you're doing it with this pool noodle, you know, just as long as they're a couple inches big and you can have it where the root hangs down from the pool noodle itself. Um, you can go ahead and pull them out. And I learned that from biointensive. If you all look into biointensive growing, it's where they grow a bunch. They, they were getting uh, trays, like about 10, 20 trays, and they would just plant a lot. You know, not like when we get that, we plant a couple seeds, you know, so far apart. And then we come through and thin them. They would plant a lot. It looks like microgreens. They plant so much. And then they go through when they sprouted and they start picking them and they start spreading them out and picking just the best ones to spread out. And from there they go through. So they, they kind of have a better uh, crop because they go through a couple of cullings 
instead of you just planting once and thinning once, they'd plant a bunch of them and go through and see which ones were doing the best and which ones were doing the best and which ones were doing the best. And then they had the best of the best when they finally got the ones to the, they were going to grow to maturity. Yeah, highly is very difficult now. Oh, is it? Yeah, no English speakers left. Yeah. Oh, you're close to Homestead. My my uh, aunt and uncle lived in Homestead for a while. I think, is there um, uh, like an Air Force base or something close around there? It's hard for me to remember. It's like uh, four, over 40 years ago. But yeah, four. Oh, you know what, guys? Nobody, nobody has to do this, but I'm going to pop a link in here. And this is just to show you um, if anybody ever wants to pop on here, if you guys have watched any other live streams, you if you go to the link that I'm going to put in the chat, you can always uh, call it with your phone and you can pop up. You can have video and audio or you can have just audio if you want to pop on here. I'll get my uh, earphones on if anybody pops in there and, and I'll pop you up here if you want to talk to anybody. That might be fun. That might be something else we're doing, too. Let me see if I can do this. Oh, Air Reserve Base now. Okay. So there we go. Yeah. So, and the other thing, y'all see this line behind me? Where'd it go? That's because this is this is a sleeping bag. Like I said, I had a green screen up before, which was an actual green screen. This is a sleeping bag, so it's all lumpy, and I don't have the settings just right. But I thought, ah, hey, let's come on here. We'll just come on here and um, talk a little bit. Let me see. Yeah, so the downspouts, uh, if anybody's ordered them and you got them and when you start growing, I know it's going to be a couple weeks and that, you know, and especially people up north will be a little, little longer. If anybody does that, uh, grows, make sure you take pictures and start sharing them with us. Or um, if you can't do it here, join my Facebook group and share it in there. And I should get everybody's pictures out of there and, and post them up here for you. So, you know, the people that aren't in that. But let me put that up. Yeah, I just wanted everybody to know, too, that this is going to be about the last we're coming up on the last week of March. And I've been having a buy one, get one free sale. Uh, let's see. This is going to be about the last chance for it because uh, we're running out of downspouts around me. And right now, I don't know what's going to happen as far as like getting stuff shipped in, because right now they're worried about getting toilet paper, sanitizer, uh, wipes, facial tissue, uh, medical supplies, groceries. They're worried about getting all this stuff in. I don't think downspouts are going to be high up on their list. And all the orders that we've had in the past two or three weeks, I've kind of wiped out everyone around us in our area. So either I'm going to have to drive like 30 or 40 miles to go pick some up. And I don't have a truck anymore that's i used to have a truck and i don't have a truck so i have to drive about 30 40 miles and i can only fit about five or six of them inside of my honda if no one else comes with me that, that's the car i have so yeah i'll put that on there and let people know that's about so there's a couple more in the areas right around me, but but not too many left. So I just wanted to let her give everybody a fair, fair shake at that. But after that, I might go ahead and either put it like back to regular price. So, you know, there aren't as many orders and maybe I can keep up with it or I might have to just shut it off um, or close down the store until I'm sure that I can get stuff in. Because uh, if I don't keep shipping stuff out, you know, if people order and I don't keep shipping stuff out the the store you know does, you get bad marks and, and and they can actually like shut your store down if you're not doing it although i think at this time they might waive some of that stuff but you never know so i don't i don't like to you know uh not ship any orders out you know because of stuff i've had stuff like you know the nutrients some of you guys the nutrients were like late coming in um boxes i have to make my own boxes you know so that takes a little time as well as you know the downspout itself but if i can't get the downspout that's the major part of it what you know i have to cut and drill and bend and everything uh if i can't get those in or it takes me a while to get it i think like home depot lows i can order it but it takes them about two weeks over here um so it might uh, uh after after this weekend 
I'm, I'm going to leave the sale up. If you guys see it, if you go in anytime this week, if you decide or change your mind, I think the link's down in the description. If you change your mind during the week, pop in there. And if you see it still there, that means that I can still source it pretty close. And once it gets to be where, where I have to, you know, cause I don't really want to drive and, and travel too far because we're supposed to be self isolating, you know, staying at home. So I don't want to be driving too far to get them. So when it gets to be like that, I'll just cut it off. So if you see it in the store, uh, I'm still doing it. And there's still a couple trickling in, uh, even though it's hard. There's like about four, there's five or six like Home Depot and Lowe's around me. They both carry it. If you guys did this yourself and uh, like a couple will come in here and a couple will come in here. I have to check online and I have to drive this way or that way. Some, some days I'm driving all over the place, picking up two or three here and, and four over here or one over here. But uh, if they keep trickling in like that, I can I can find them, but um, it's getting a little tough right now. I just want to let you all know. So uh, if you guys see like my short uh, my store just like close one day, um, it's not because uh, you know I'm tired of it and I, I'm not doing it anymore. It's because I'm having trouble getting supplies in, and I just don't want to uh, do that to y'all. So so if it goes off, it just means it's like temporary until all of this other stuff you know kind of blows over and, and things get back to normal. I love the downspouts I bought from you. Oh, cool. Appreciate that. Awesome. Like I said, when you, when you get to growing some stuff, you know, take some pictures for us. What do you think of DWC deep water culture system for your hydroponics? It works good. It's awesome. Um, the only thing about it is that it, it takes a lot more nutrients. It's less care because uh, you have a lot of nutrients. It works better in the hot areas because you have more mass. The more water you have, the um, uh, longer it takes to warm up. So like these downspouts, that's why I use this one is like a two by or a three by four. It's three inches by four inches. And the other one that they have is like only two inches and it's only three inches wide. So, you know, basically uh, pretty much about half the size of this. I think a half a gallon fills them up. And uh, these, if you if you leave them in the sun and they're smaller and they're thinner, so the two by threes you can get started with if you just want to grow real quick baby greens, harvest them, start again, start again. But if you leave it in the sun, that little bit of mass, especially if you let it dry up a little and it's like only halfway down, that warms up like really, really quick. The deep water culture, if you guys in the chat don't know about deep water culture, that's just like how they grow like hydroponic lettuce. It's like a, a, a what do you call it, big container of water. And in the hydroponic things, it's, it's like this huge, looks like a pond. It's so big. And you put styrofoam on top. It's floating. Some of them are like a floating raft. And they put the lettuce in it just like this, except the roots are dangling right in the water. But it does work a lot better in the hot areas because that mass takes a lot longer to warm up. So it stays pretty cool. And that's why in that thing that I showed, the picture that I put up here with all those uh, milk cartons, the reason why I put them in there and I filled it up with water was to keep everything cool because each one of those were only half a gallon. And if I had those out there in the heat, they warm up really, really fast. But when I filled the whole thing up like a pool and the mass got bigger, it kept it cool a little while longer. My first ones, I made 48 inches, but that was really awkward to use. So I'll probably make mine like yours next time. You're cutting 30 inches. Yeah, I'm doing 30 inches, one out of the 10 foot, 120. Yeah, it makes four. Exactly, exactly right, Penny. And that's why I did that. I, I made it 30 inches because I was making them 24 inches. Uh, let's see, 24, so two feet. So you could get five out of them. But I thought if I made it just a little bit bigger, because I found a 32 inch box at first that I could ship with and it was kind of affordable. So the cost wouldn't go up. And I found um, a 32 inch box at a 30 inch fit right inside of it. I could get four out of each one. So that's why I did that. And I could put six holes in here. So if people are just getting started and they just want to experiment with it, they, they got six spots. With the 24 inch one, I was only putting five. Um, if any of you want, I, I might I might just hold a raffle. I had a couple of uh, um, one, two. I had a couple of 24 inch ones that were left, you know, and I don't sell those. You know, but I, I could put them in the shop. I usually don't sell those. So uh, a couple of people had custom ordered uh, the four foot ones. So I cut two four foot ones out of one downspout, but that only left me two feet. So that wasn't long enough to sell for a 30 inch one. So I got a couple of those 
sitting around if anybody if you think i should just have a raffle and give away a couple or 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 whatever um y'all let me know what you think about that how do you get the cardboard to make your own boxes um i just go to lowe's i was getting i found one box that was 24 inches by 18 by 18 and i found out if i cut it just right it's 24 inches i could get a 30 inch box with three inch flaps you know, if I made a six by six box, so out of one little section, I could cut it and get it just right without getting that handle in there. I don't know if you guys have seen the Lowe's boxes, the moving boxes, they have the handles in it. So uh, what do you call it? I, I got that cardboard and just use that. I just get a bigger box and cut it down. Hey, from the Philippines. Awesome. My uh, aunt and uncle were from the Philippines. And you guys forgive me if I get lost in the chat here. Like I said, I'm, I'm streaming to YouTube and Facebook too. And, and there's lots of uh, uh, comments and, and each one of you can only see like uh, half of what's coming in, I think. So if you don't see, if I miss your uh, question or whatever, pop it in again. Focus. Do I need to focus? I have plants growing for other people this spring. Oh, cool. That's nice, Penny. Very cool. I was thinking of doing DWC. Let's see, mine either has five or 10 gallons. Yeah, having a hard time picking. And most of YouTube says keep the water. Yeah, 62 to 68 is, is pretty good. Remind people about the scaffolding shade house you built. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, what I did, what she's talking about, I've got a video down there. We had a scat, it's called a baker scaffold. It's not like the big one. It's a small yellow one that's about two feet or 30, 30 some odd inches by uh, about six feet. And it's about six feet tall. So they're not real big. But I had two, my wife does murals and we used to use them and, and we stopped doing anything way high up, like on a ceiling. We used to stack them up and we stopped doing things up on a ceiling. So I was going to get rid of them. They, they were a couple years old and my wife wanted a greenhouse and or what we made was a shade house and uh instead of going and buying all that stuff i took both the scaffolding set them up uh framed out around it with a little wood and put some shade cloth over it i i got a video down in my uh channel somewhere uh just uh look around for it but it, it works pretty good and it's like recycled material and then what i did um that picture you saw with the all of the melt cartons and all the broccoli greens that was one of the landings that you like step on on a scaffold. I just put some two by 12s or two by 10s, framed it out and threw some plastic in it. And that's how I did that. And you could actually make a DWC out of that. Do plants need direct sunlight? Um, either direct sunlight or artificial. Um, at least some direct sunlight. If it's like really hot where you're at, like we're going to be 95 degrees next week already. Uh, make sure they get a lot of morning sun because that's when it first comes up and it's not hot yet and they get a lot of that sunlight and then during the afternoon if it gets really hot where you are make sure it gets kind of like just partial there's some kind of shade uh, you know spring you, you wherever you live might be like a beautiful spring and then you want to give it as much sun as it can get um, but if you're not getting any you know natural light like that you need some artificial light too penny Okay, so you're talking to Penny. I think Penny's just answering you back there. Depends on the plants. Yeah, that's what he says. And uh, there's there's some, you know, like our lettuces. They they take a little bit of. Um, uh, if you don't have enough light, they'll get like leggy, and and uh, they can get a little bitter. Um, but. It depends on the heat too. So there's a couple of varieties that I grow. One was like a salad bowl of spinach and it kind of looks like a funky leaf lettuce. And that's like a cut and come again. And I think a black seeded Sam Samson, if you guys have heard of that one, that one kind of grows like that too. It doesn't grow like a head of lettuce. You move this out of the way. Let's see. Thanks. Mine have been shipped. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. If anybody, like I said, I, uh, as soon as I print up the shipping label here, I'm like a mile away from the post office or two miles. So I, I drop it right off there. And uh, the only thing right now is 
mo most of them should be like two day priority. And but you, you know, with things going like they are and people calling in sick, it, it's gonna it might take a couple of days longer. No room for that here. You see what you're talking about. Please answer Susan. I need to know also. Okay, Susan, how much? Okay, sorry, I missed one. How much does a 30 inch downspout container weigh filled with nutrient solution? Concerned about my plastic shelves, made bow. Um, I don't know exactly. I know that when I ship these out, that it's like uh about three pounds when i'm shipping about two so they they don't weigh much more than a pound and then it fills up it, it usually takes just a gallon to fill it up so you can take a gallon of water um full when you first start that's what what it's going to be um i think it's about three three quarts to a gallon so if you can take a gallon and set it on a scale you kind of know what the um weight is and I've gr I've used plastic shelves. I think you're talking about the ones you get like in Home Depot or Walmart or whatever. The, the the plastic ones you just put together and stack up. I think those things hold like 100 pounds or something a shelf. Let's see. Slide them out onto the table. No lifting required. Yeah, I try. I I try not to lift them up in that, especially like if they're bigger then 30 if you make your own i'll get like my wife on one side and me on the other side and if it's full you both will be trying to lift up you know you, to see who it's going to the nutrients going to fall off, off and um what we usually do is take a bucket on the end and tilt one end up and get a lot of the nutrient solution into that bucket and then we'll pick it up and move it it's nice and light and after you move it in if it's going to be there a while go and fill the nutrients back up if it's just overnight your plants are fine with just a little bit of nutrient solution in the, the bottom. And if you want to take them back outside, you know, put it back in. One gallon of water weighs about eight pounds. All right. So close to 10 pounds uh, when it's all together, I guess, full, probably a little less than 10. I've got an extra room where I'll be able to do that. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Is this like on my side? It might be on my side. That's what I was asking if everything was okay. I said, I might have to do this live stream again. I might just pop back on tomorrow. Um, right before I came on, my internet speed went down to one or less than one. And the ping was like 2,400 or something. You know, it's supposed to be down like 20 something, you know, as low as it can go. And the ping went up and the the my download speed went down. I was like, ah, oh, I'm going to live stream. Then it went back to 10. And it's like bouncing around between it's, it's real weird right now i don't know if it's like everybody came home and was jumping on the internet or over something on my end so you guys let me know if the stream just seems really wonky just let me know and i just i'll pop back on tomorrow just watch for a notification tomorrow um and i i've got two different internets in my house because i was having problems so i can come back on i can just run a wire to my other modem tomorrow and see if that works a little better do you prepare your own plant nutrients? Yes. Um, I think I've got a couple of videos in that. We use master blend and um, no lag at all over here. Okay, cool. Thank you. Thank you, Penny. Um, it's master blend and calcium nitrate and Epsom salt that you get from uh, the drugstore. And all we do is mix, I go, uh, 10 grams of each master blend, 10 grams of calcium nitrate, five grams of the Epsom salt. And I put everything together and just mix it up real good. I got a hose with a, you know, a spray nozzle and just sprays and mixes it up. There's a lot of people out there say that the master blend has to be mixed separate from the um, calcium nitrate. So if you guys order this, I've got, um, hold on one second. Now I'll grab what one of these look like. Go along the way. I've got all these things packed up here. There you go. So when you get your downspouts, you get like a, this is enough to do like five gallons. And see what I do is I put the master blend and the Epsom salt together. You can kind of see the I don't know if you can see the different colors in there. One's yellow and one's white. 
those can be mixed together and then the calcium nitrates in a different bag so when you guys get that if you want to mix this in like two and a half gallons and this in two and a half gallons and then stir it up until it gets dissolved and then mix those together it's an extra step that's like recommended i've been doing this for like eight years and i just take these both and dump them in and do it but now i take that at the time i'm about to mix it um you know don't take these two and mix them together and set them on your shelf and then go away for a day or two you know say oh, i'm gonna do it tomorrow because when you come back this calcium nitrate will either be totally liquid depends on how much humidity is in your area it might just be liquid or it might form like into a rock and then it won't never mix with the the water and your other nutrients so you want to keep these separate until it's time to mix up and then dump them together i just do it all at one time um to me that's about the easiest I've, I've used some of the liquid fertilizers before and i was spending a lot of money to grow uh just some lettuce so this comes out you know relatively cheap if you can get a master blend like if you get a five pound bag i got a 25 pound bag it lasted me like years um but i grow a lot of plants so if you you know if you get like five pound bag i think it was like 14 or 15 dollars or something Yeah, let me see. All right. Now, some other people were asking about this. Let's see if I can get this off. Sorry, guys. This is why my wife's going to be helping me so that I can. There, that's better. Some people are asking about this and they keep seeing the video. I got two lids on here. I just want to go over this real quick. And the reason why I did this was because the one lid I was doing it and just growing like microgreens on top. Then some of the other plants like the pea shoots, uh, my sunflower sprouts, they grow a little bigger and they're like a heavy plant and they kind of need something to hold on to and they'll grow up straight. Otherwise, they're all just kind of laying over. So I do put a little bit of soil in here. So, but what, if you went and bought these at the dollar store, you'd buy one and then this would be the lid from another one. So you kind of waste the bottom, right? Um, so what i've been doing here see and the reason why i did that was because that snaps on there then that wicks up and then this sits on here you know it's all like nice and sturdy so if you want to do it like that that works really well that's that's how i did it but some people were saying well they're wasting a bottom and they don't like to waste stuff so what i've done in my last couple ones and i'll show you in a video is i just kind of like took this one out let me see if i can pop it out of here See, these shop towels are pretty good because they're, they're kind of tough. Like if I just had paper towel and I was trying to pull it off, it'd probably just rip. The shop towels are pretty tough. So I've been doing this. It's just putting one. Well, this one's actually two paper towels. See the little line right there? So there's one, two. And what I do now, I think one of my recent videos is I cut another line down here on my newer ones. And I'd put one up and then right down the middle. And this one go up and down the middle. And then that way it wick up from the middle too. And if you go check out like one of my earlier live streams, um, some of my microgreens were growing like on the edge and the middle wasn't getting enough water. And somebody said, why don't you cut a slit in there? And I did that and it could wick up the middle too. And they were coming out. Everything was getting watered by itself. I didn't do anything to it. So it was perfect. <clears throat> so this would actually have one more line on there. And this is what I usually do. Now see the, and if you find any containers, whether it's a dollar store or Walmart or, or wherever, just flip the lid over. And as long as it's got a little bit, you know, it's kind of deep where you can put a little bit of soil, then that's good. And this one sets up here and see, it doesn't fit perfect. And see if I, you know, bump it, if there's like stuff in there and I bump it, it kind of rolls around. You know, this, if it's got soil, it might be heavy and it might just go, you know, fall in a little bit. You have to watch it, but i'm growing them in there like that and then you don't end up wasting you know another uh container and it works just fine like that but that's what we're going to be doing in the live streams we're going to set a lot of these up in real time we'll plant them out uh you guys kind of tell me what you want to grow i've got you know i'm always growing like sunflowers i might grow a couple more peas um i like amaranth because that's just another color you know it, it, Everything we're growing is like green, 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 green. I like throwing a little color in, so the amaranth is a, a cool color. Um, but we'll, we'll be setting those up like that, and that's what I do now. 
like I said, because people didn't want to waste that. But you can see that's not as sturdy. So when we're doing that, you're gonna you'll see that. But you know, it it works. You know, and that's what we're all about. You know, whatever whatever's gonna work for people. So if you don't want to waste the extra lid, you know, just set them up like that. Cool. All righty. Oops, sorry. I let my comments get away from me. Let's see. From YouTube. I bought a small set of nutrients a year ago, about 10 bucks. I made two of your downspouts. Still have about two third of the nutrients left. Cool. Yeah. They, they, it, it lasts a while. And that's why, um, that's why I went with uh, Master Blend because I started out, they, they've, I won't name all the different names, but if you go into a hydroponic shop, shop they usually, they didn't even have Master Blend there. They've got a lot of other nutrients. People do hydroponics. And most of them are like liquids that you mix together and they'll come in separate containers and you have to mix up so much and measure them out. And with Master Blend, it was basically if you want a digital scale like I got and get 10 grams, 10 grams, um, you know, that's cool. But some people that I know that grow this way, the cracky system, they just get a teaspoon and they go like or ta tablespoon. I think they go like one tablespoon of this, one tablespoon of that and, and uh, half of it, half a tablespoon of the Epsom salt and you know they don't even get exact and basically one of the nutrients that you buy off of amazon it's actually in my store but i don't know if there's many more left because they don't have a bunch of them in at a time it came in a kit where the the master blend and the epsom salt was mixed together already and the calcium nitrate was in another container and it came with a little spoon kind of like uh, miracle grow you know you you buy those in the store and it's got a little spoon and it just said add a spoonful of this a spoon and a half a spoon of that so they weren't being real exact about the nutrients. Um, so I got the master blend. I was like, well, I was going through so much of the liquid stuff when I went to order it for the first time from Morgan County Seeds. I was like, well, I don't know. I'll probably go through five pounds pretty fast. You know, that's about the size of a bag of sugar. So I said, I'll get 25 pounds. And I got it and you use only 10 grams. And it, it used such a little amount. Of, how uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Some of you guys around uh, uh, one pound. What do you get about 40, 45? There's 450 grams, 450 some odd grams, I think, um, per pound. So if you're using 10 grams, you're getting about 45 portions out of one pound. So multiply that times five, you know, about 250 uh, uh, five gallon buckets out of a five pound um, bag of master blend. So I got a 25 pound bag of master blend. So it lasted me like years. Sunflowers. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I've, I've got some sprouting right now. Then I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, what do you call it? I put some outside. The squirrels love them. I don't know if you guys have a problem with it, but I grow a lot extra. I'll eat some and then I'll put some out on the table out there. So the squirrels will kind of attack that and stay away from all my other stuff because we moved in the city, but there's like, friggin' 20 of them running around back there. And for some reason they love the sunflowers. And once they eat that, they'll kind of leave everything else alone. So I kind of uh, grow those and pop that out there too and let them dig around in it until, you know, uh, whatever's like left over that I wasn't gonna eat. Even when I harvest them, I'll go put it out there. They'll still have fun like digging around in it and munching on the little shoots. Hello, glad, glad to be able to see y'all. Hey, how are you doing, Diana? And let's see, I ordered 62 pounds set, 25 pounds, because I had no idea how much it would take. Oh, Lord. Wow. 62 pounds. That's yeah, that that's a lot. You're either going to be doing a lot of gardening or um, you're going to have it for a while. Now, if you have like a greenhouse set up, I don't know if you guys watch uh, CB's Gardening Greenhouse. Um, he, he has a whole greenhouse full of tomatoes and one full of peppers, at least last year. I don't know what he's growing this year. And he's got to set up like a Dutch bucket system. If any of you guys don't know what that is, it's you're growing in, you fill up like buckets, like five gallon containers with um, vermiculite, the white stuff. And you put a drain at the bottom and a little drip line in the top. And you put your plant in there and it grows into vermiculite, you know, no soil. And, and it constantly just drips on it. And then it, whatever comes out the bottom of the drain, it all goes into a common drain and back into the reservoir where it goes through a filter and gets pumped out again. 
but he goes through a lot more master blend than I do. He grows an entire greenhouse, whereas I might grow like 10, 10 tomato plants at the most. Um, and, and he's probably got like hundreds of them, all different varieties, but I don't have them uh, listed right down here, but you guys just look up CB's garden and greenhouse. And he's also got another one like Easy Hydroponics or something, but you can find that from his other one. But watch that because he's just getting started right now with the setup. So if you guys want to see beginning to end, um, go ahead and watch the channel. Real great couple. It, you know, they remind me of some of my wife's relatives um, that we used to go see out in Alabama. A real, real sweet couple. And he knows a lot about the hydroponics and nutrients. He mixes them up like the correct way, you know, separate, mixes them together. Uh, he checks because he's checking a one big container or a couple, you know, with the, the greenhouses, but he checks the pH, which we get a lot of questions about. And he checks the amount of dissolved solids, how much nutrients are actually in it. And he adjusts it and then watch him because they get kind of hot during the summer. So he'll go out there and he'll actually have to like freeze like either nutrient solution or some water. When uh, he goes to work, he'll put it in the night before when he gets home from work, the nutrients will be warmed up enough where he'll have to take like that block and drop it in the, the um, it's like a garbage pail, uh, like a 30 gallon garbage pail, drop it in there, let it cool it down really quick. Um, but he's real knowledgeable and they grow like, it's, it's like loads of tomatoes and peppers in that every year amongst like all this other, you know, cucumbers and squash and everything. So the real sweet couple, y'all check out the channel if you got any questions about that. Where do you buy your seeds? Linda, let's see, as far as microgreens or, or whatever I'm growing, most of them, uh, I get at Home Depot or Lowe's. If I'm going to grow just enough to grow into baby greens, if I need more like microgreens, um, my Amazon shop is down below. There's a couple of ones that I use and you don't have to use those. You can check them. Uh, just go in the store. When when you click on my store, it's going to come up and down at the bottom. I'll say hydroponic supplies and it'll say seeds. Um, click on the seeds. And when you click on there, I think that the name, like like if I get the broccoli seeds, I, I forget which ones there were. One was from Handy Pantry or something like that. And one was from Sprout House. Now the peas came from Sprout House. But if you go and you click on that and you, their name will kind of be like a link, like Sprout House. And I think that'll take you to their page. And you can see all the stuff that they they have. So I didn't want to put like loads of stuff in my store and get people like really confused. But um, those are the three kind of companies that I order from: Handy Pantry, Sprout House, and there was one other that I get the sunflower seeds from. I can't think of it right now. But if you go to my store, like I said, if you you click on that, you'll see their name will be highlighted, like their their store. Um, it, I think it'll be in blue. Just click on that and it'll pop you over to their store and they'll have all the seeds that, that they offer. So that way you'll, you'll have more of a, an option and everything. And that is what I get. I, I got the broccoli seeds because I, I needed more. I got loads of broccoli. Um, you guys saw the uh, milk containers, that garden that we grew um, that I popped the picture up on here. I'll pop it up one more time in case some people didn't see. But all of this where do we go? Can't really see. Well, you can see that's a good bit of it. All of that. Kind of in the way. All of that, all those greens and everything. That came from just one. Um, we grew some microgreens. And really just a little spot like this. If you go back and watch a video where you see... Uh, let's see, the video looks like it'll have all of those in front of it. If you go watch that video, you'll see me pulling out the microgreens. And we actually used only a spot about this big. So this whole thing was maybe about 10, 10, 15 grams of, of seeds. You know, I just sprinkled a little on. I didn't really measure it, but uh, probably not even a, a, a tablespoon, like a half a tablespoon or something. And just this little bit here is what that whole thing of greens came from just that little spot. So that's why I like to have these going, you know, so that if you go and you harvest some, switch out the nutrients, you know, if you have small containers like this, that's why I grow in small ones like this. If you decide you want to harvest this, then you go ahead and harvest this. 
dump it, clean it out. If you got microgreens, you pop them back in, get started again. You know, if you, you have all like the real big ones, you, you won't probably harvest them all at the same time and you'll be pulling some out, pop, popping them in. But, but I like this because they're easy to move. I can, I can take care of one and start over. But uh, the broccoli, like I said, that little tiny bit of seeds was that. And I ordered like a, a pound of broccoli, didn't use hardly any of it. And so the broccoli seeds go a long way. And that, that was in the store uh, where I got the broccoli from. I get online, I got amaranth because I don't know about you guys, but at Home Depot Lowe's, they, they don't have amaranth. You know, they, they basically have like, you know, beans and tomatoes and, and all the stuff that, you know, traditional gardeners grow. It's a little harder to st find stuff I put in the store, but all of the other stuff that you can just find up at the local home improvement store, I, you know, I figured it, that's probably easier for you all to get. I think I'm set. Cool. Awesome. Yep. Spring's coming. I hope everybody's doing all right. You know, if you, you guys are doing all right, let me know how, how everybody's doing, you know, with everything that's uh, going on in the world. Jeannie, how are you doing? Great day for growing. Oh man, it's like beautiful right now. It's going to, I don't know where you, you live at Jeannie, but it's going to be like 95 degrees next week. Uh, getting a little warm already. What do you think of aqua sprouts that work for 10 gallon fish tanks? Most will grow bigger. Um, aqua sprouts. I don't know what that is, but I have seen in Home Depot and Lowe's, it says aquaponics and it'll show like a little fish tank and it'll have a little tray up on top that you put plants in and you have your fish below. Those things really, they get me kind of angry because they kind of, I know we like doing things cheap and easy. Uh, and it looks like an easy way to do aquaponics. There's a lot that goes into aquaponics. If you guys start to research it and the reason why we do, I've started with this, I would love to do aquaponics, but if I kill a couple of plants, I kill a couple of plants to start over. If I kill some fish, I feel kind of bad about that. Um, and if you're not careful when you're doing aquaponics, the life cycle that happens, the food cycle between the fish and the plants with the fish eating, you either have to feed the fish or you can have something like duckweed or something that the fish can munch on if, if you're having like tilapia or, or what have you. But usually you're feeding the fish, the fish poop and the plants take up um, nutrients from that and the plants grow. But when the plants do that, they uh, the balance between nitrates and nitrites go off. And if that goes too far off, then your fish will die. So you have to constantly monitor it. And that's why you like this. We're trying to do it without a pH meters and everything. Um, if you're in aquaponics, you have to do it because you have like a living animal inside of there, which either it's your pet or or if you're doing a big scale, it's your food. And you don't want to put a lot of time and investment into something. They make it look easy. It's like, here's some fish. Here's some plants. You know, they're going to eat. They're going to poop. You're going to have a bunch of plants. It, there's a whole lot more that goes into it. So please research it. If you guys want to get into aquaponics, I know I try to make everything look easy here. Aquaponics is not, not that easy. Um, there's actually a formula for how many inches of fish you should have per gallon or and per plant you know that you actually have to do some math to figure out how much you can't just like throw a bunch of fish in and think they're all going to be okay because they they got to breathe and and they got to live in it too so so it's a uh, a little more a little bit more goes into it i just found your channel today awesome appreciate it christy glad to have you here i'm enjoying your content cool hello from oh cool louisiana how are you doing I got some uh, friends moving from, I think, Detroit up north are moving to Louisiana, um, I think, uh, in the next couple of weeks. I'm excited to see if the system can help me grow some greens and shade during the summer. Yeah, definitely. Leah, keep keep an eye out on all the, the videos that we got. And I'm going to have a video coming up pretty soon, too, to talk about the heat, you know, before we warm up too much. Um, we're, we're already going to be pretty warm, but people have some questions about that, too, because some people, you know, if you put microgreens into one of these and you plant them out and you've got little tiny microgreens and you take that and you put it out in the direct sun they're just going to shrivel up and die so there there is a little bit of uh, finagling you have to do with it robert what's up not much how are you doing bud you doing okay hanging in there you wouldn't believe how many calls and texts i've gotten this week from people asking me how to garden awesome 
Cool. Spread the knowledge, right? That's what we're all about. Like we said, you know what? And a lot of people don't when I because I never thought of this when I was growing up, it's just gardening, right? And I was like, oh, it's cool. You can grow your own tomatoes and, and it tastes better and and it's readily available for you. You know, it's it, that's cool. But I didn't think how empowering it is that you know, we don't need a whole lot to actually live, you know, lots of the stuff that we have, we don't need, you know, you need a little shelter, you need food, you need air, you need water, right? And out of food and air and water, you know, we breathe air, but you know, if people around you pollute it, you know, that's one thing, but uh, water, we depend on most of us, you know, unless you have your own well, you know, like city water, we're dependent on someone. If, it, if something happens to it, it's gone, or we have to go to the store to buy it which when we were growing up, we never bought water, right? It was free. And food is the basic necessity of life. And almost all of us depend on other people. And, and this crisis that we're going through right now is just an, an inkling. It's, ju it's just a, a, like a, a gut check, you know, a punch to the gut to let you know how dependent we are on when, when all of a sudden people are panicking that we're going to be out of stuff, that they're running to all the grocery stores and everything and, and grabbing stuff and hoarding stuff is because we can't provide for ourselves is because when, when, when it really comes down to it, we're not all that independent that we're depending on other people. And it's one thing if you depend on someone to make you a shirt or to make your car or something, but for a basic necessity of life, you know, just eating, you know, that almost all of us, you know, are dependent, you know, there's some people are self-sufficient, not very many, like 1% or 1% or 1%, you know, a very tiny bit. The rest of us depend on other people for that. And when we, we grow some of our own stuff where it lessens our grocery bill or times like this get tough. And, and when people are out there scrambling around and, and rifling through everything and, and fighting that, that you got, you know, some of your own stuff, you know, that, that feels a little empowering that, that you know how to do that. So to me, you know, right, right now, this is a, a good time for us to all kind of think about it and and get into it that's why I'm, I'm just so thrilled you know that so many people are trying this out and the people that are like sending me pictures or going to our, our keep on growing group and posting pictures in there and sharing it with each other you know i don't i don't pop in there every day i've got you know so much other stuff to do but when i do pop in there i see all these pictures uh once in a while notification will pop up on my, my phone uh and some of you guys have just uh messaged me you know, that, that that's pretty cool, too. I love seeing your little uh, pictures. I, I got a couple this week where people had their stuff set up. Hey, what's up, Void Pex? How are you doing? Penny, where where to purchase online? Let's see. Susan, let's see. Answer that would be two full spectrum. So, OK, so you're talking about your your lights, cukes, tomatoes. Let me know if I get too too far behind in the chat. How big of a container do you need for cukes? and green beans and tomatoes okay i think Jen, uh penny's answering you right and if she did answer you let me know looking at aquaponics they seem complicated also yeah i think if you'd be, like bigger plants it'd be too small if you want to grow it. yeah yeah why i want to try dwc yeah dwc um dwc if you guys don't know it's deep water culture it's just a, it's a step up from this. Um, pretty much wherever that sits, you got to leave it because you're using so much uh, volume, you can't move it around. But it does take longer for it to heat up. So it does in in the hot um, summer months. It does help to have a bigger container. We have another video on that coming up too. One thing you don't want to do is get too deep because some of your plants you. Uh, just from gardening experience, you guys figure out that some of them, like lettuce, won't grow real deep roots. But, um, excuse me, uh, tomatoes will. Um, uh, peas, you know, they, they shoot off a real long tap root. You know, so you can have a deeper thing. The shard grows in a deep um, uh, DWC, and the roots will kind of grow down. But if you put, like, uh, pak choy in something really deep, the roots only get so long, you know, and then you have long roots trying to get to it, but most of the roots are small and the plant grows pretty fast. Once it gets going, you know, it doesn't use a lot of nutrients. Then once it gets going, it kind of grows and then it bolts and you'll actually waste a lot of nutrients if you get too deep of a container. So the pak choy I like to grow in, in thin containers. If you saw one of my other videos, I had a, I think it's called like an ID box of Rubbermaid. 
and it was like yay big but it was only that deep and it was kind of perfect for it let's see it's uh, exactly empowering yeah yeah isn't it exciting we learn the law of harvest it always gives peace yeah and bok choy yeah it's awesome i love bok choy some people are on there and you know and they see me growing a lot of it in that but it, you know like spinach has one texture most most of the leafy greens you know you either blend them up smoothie or whatever you know and they basically have like one texture but your bok choy you've got two different textures you've got like the leafy green and like i said if you just chop it up throw it in your soup you don't even have to cook it and it wilts delicious like that but then you chop up the stalk the white one it stays crisp you know you don't have to cook it either just toss it in your soup and from that you get two different textures you get green and white and you get crispy and and a little chewy and you get it all you know from that one leaf it, it's really cool and i like the taste of it on the grow youtube channel did fantastic light test cool and they also did several how to put the system yeah i think they just had one out together like a total walkthrough of everything um y'all check that out if you didn't it's on the grow uh, it's a couple i think i put them you know highlighted them one time but i love that couple they just started out they took a little concession trailer like i think 20 20 or 30 foot um can't remember which one it was but one like you would use to like as a food truck and they converted into growing microgreens and and they do all kind of tests so all these things that you all are asking about you know like what kind of seeds and and they test um hydroponics versus soil and and they do all kinds of taste tests and 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 they walk you through everything microgreens like i'm talking about uh baby greens and we grow tomatoes and we grow you know we do a whole lot they're just like laser focused on microgreens and because they're they're laser focused on that and they're like an awesome couple they're growing like really fast they're on youtube but uh, y'all you know, check them out if you got any questions about microgreens. And don't forget about Pepe too. I mean, he he's really busy and it's kind of hard for him to keep up, you know, with everyone. But I mean, his channel is uh, growing too and, and his business is like booming. It's like, you know, it, it's all he can do to keep up with it. And that's growing microgreens. He's in Australia. All right, so any of you guys who or like in the land of Oz and and that I know there's some people were asking for the UK but if any of you guys are growing hydroponics in around the world um, if you could pop in the chat what if you can't get master blend what nutrients you're using or even better if you could go into the keep on growing on Facebook keep on growing and you can join the group and we'll let you in um, I should do a post that we can save somewhere and then everybody around the world whatever nutrients you're using if you could put that in, because I get questions all the time. Like I, I don't know what they use in in Canada, or I don't know what they use in uh, the Netherlands and and Africa, and you know, and, and people are always asking. Um, but it, I know that there's people growing hydroponics everywhere in the world because that's where I learned. I, I like looked at videos from all over the place. Um, so there's there's got to be people around there somewhere, and the nutrients might not be the same as Master Blend. You might have to tweak it or mess around, but that's what we did with these. You know, we were just experimenting. But if, yeah, if, if anybody's used anything other than Master Blend and it's working and you're successful, um, yeah, either like join our Facebook group and let people know or, or uh, catch me on Twitter or, or something. And, and um, what do you call it? Uh, just share with everybody. That'd be cool. Let's see. I'd like to join the group because I'd learn lots because I'm what? Oh, cool. Washington State. Awesome. But yeah, I heard there's a lot of you. You can uh, grow really good up there. What is the NPK of Master Blend? NPK of Master Blend is um, 4, 18, 38. And then if they mix in the Epsom salt with it, it changes a little to five something, 12, or I, I don't know. I'd have to go out and go get that. But it's 4, 18, 38 if you go looking for it. And there's actually a couple of other brands. I'm going to try one that's not Master Blend that you can get on Amazon too. It's just tomato formula and it's 4, 18, 38. I'm going to try a couple of those out too and see if those work just as good as Master Blend or not. Here we go. Maxi Grow and Maxi Bloom. Cool. Maxi Grow for me. It's still the first bag I bought. Oh, cool. Okay. So Maxi Grow and Maxi Bloom, are you you guys talking? Are those powder form or is that a, a liquid? 
Here we go. Yeah, 4 1838. Just ordered. Cool deal. Yeah. Um, uh, and the calcium nitrate is 1500. Um, and the Epsom salt is just magnesium sulfate. You can get that at the drugstore. I think the dollar store has it for a dollar. Um, I got mine at uh, Lowe's. I think it was like a five pound bag for about seven bucks. Gonna try this vinyl downside idea as soon as it warms up a bit. Yeah, still too, too chilly. Oh, where's that? Wisconsin? Yeah, but that's what we're doing now. I figured, you know, that's why I said I cleaned out my garden. Uh, I'm getting ready. I was going to walk everybody through it. And I, uh, so I've got a little time because I didn't know it was going to warm up like this because we didn't have a winter here. We had like two or three days. It went down in the high 30s or something. We never went down below freezing. And so I'm expecting like a late frost. Like, because I mean, once in a while, you know, we will get like around April or something. I remember um, our fair, our state fair always comes first week of April. And, and I remember one year I saw having jackets on, you know, walk around the fair. And then by the afternoon I was holding every, and that's why I remember, cause I was walking around holding everyone's jacket. And um, so once in a while we do get like a little late frost, but uh, we have, you know, I think if I cut my hair, you guys have seen some of the other videos. I've, I've got like a shaved head. I usually get towards summertime. I shave my head, but as soon as I do that, it like gets cold again and I have to get a hat. So maybe I just uh, shave my head and get it, get it over with powdered. Okay, cool. Well, I'm going to try that. Maxi grow. Max grow is general hydroponics. Okay. I tried general hydroponics one time. Um, and it, it kind of grew. I, it, I think I was used to just working with master blend and it just came out better. But uh, uh, General Hydroponics is the, the other name brand I was trying to think of. Yeah, Wisconsin is still getting below freezing. Oh, below freezing at night for another week or two. Okay, yeah. So, yeah, I hope, hope hopefully, you know, our spring gets, you know, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, I'll go ahead and start planting. And like I said, the, the good thing about this is that we're growing microgreens and that's what we're using. So if we get a frost, we'll just eat the microgreens. If we plant them into the little downspouts, you know, I put those around everywhere. You can move it. You know, I could always take these inside because we're not going to have but like a night or two. If it does go down to freezing, I'll pick it up, bring it inside. And like I said, if you got to move these, if it's full, like when you have first put your microgreens in, you might want to dump it like that into a container. And then you can move this around. And then if it's just there for the night, just leave that little bit of nutrients in there. They'll be fine unless, you know, they're tiny microgreens and the roots aren't going all the way down. You might want to fill it back up, but then you can take it back out and fill it back up the next day. Uh, we had a hurricane. You guys uh, remember Florida was Irma was coming through and I had my entire porch was full of plants. I think I had a video cause I did a little fun one where I like cloned myself. I had like three of me. That was kind of fun doing that, but we took the entire porch and moved it all inside. And, and these, you can like stack one next to the other. We had like a big art table. And they were full. It just looked like a garden inside of our house. And we hunkered down for like a week inside waiting for, you know, the wind and everything to die down. And then we just took them, dumped the nutrients back out, took them outside, filled them back up and we're back in business. So uh, a storm went through a little mini tornado went right down uh, close to us, knocked down a bunch of trees, ripped siding off the house. The fireplace was leaking, you know, storm outside. It was like category two when it went over us. You could hear like the, the house like creaking in that. And a week after that, you know, it's gone and we took this and, and we have a garden outside. You know, if the garden was outside in the ground and that storm came through, everything would have been gone. But because you're growing, it's like a portable garden. It was, it was pretty cool. Or grow indoors. Yeah, and a window indoors. Let's say no room indoors. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Tomatoes take up a lot of space. That's what I moved into like a really small house. It's, it's really, really tough for us to grow here. That when we grew over there, it was, I think, twice as big. You know, now we're in a place that's about half as small. 10, 5, 14. Yeah, see, so the Mexican grow is a little bit different. Um, there's more nitrogen. So uh, so with the Mexican grow, you guys don't add like calcium nitrate, right? It's just straight, straight Mexican grow. And then you add like the bloom or something when it gets to that point. Let's see what you got here, bud. 
I'm going to get some master blend from you as soon as my new card activates. Yeah, no problem. It's it's always up there. My bank cap is down to Monday. Yeah, there's a there's a bunch of stuff going on. Like I said, I hope everybody's safe because there's all kind of weird stuff going on out there. And um, uh, everybody just stay safe. Some Fox Farm Big Grow Hydroponic Liquid Fertilizer. Had to drive 30 miles to get it to. Yeah, that's what uh, Amazon's cool. I mean, you know, and even just online, yeah, I think I ordered from Morgan County Seeds where I got the, the big bag. Um, this is cool. Back when I first started, you know, all of this wasn't on your Amazon wasn't, you know, like with their prime membership and everything. Um, but now we can order stuff. And, and besides the nutrients, almost everything else I order is like here in like two days. Uh, we're, we're living in a great time because when I first looked into hydroponics, um, it was either try to find a book or try to find something online and, and maybe talk to someone. Um, or like he, he was saying, Darwin said, you get a hydroponic shop and I had to drive to, for me, it was 45 minutes. And uh, what do you call it? You get down there and once you get in, they're trying to sell you everything. You need this, you need that, you need this, you need that, you know, and, and they're talking about like a lot of money, but now, you know, we can test and experiment with things. You can get on Amazon and you go, well, you know, I got these, you know, I want to try it. Maybe these aren't sturdy enough for you. You know, maybe you want a little more sturdy. You want to try a net cut. You get on Amazon and order it. Like in two days, it's in, in your at your doorstep. You know, you can get a little two inch net cut. Now I drilled these. If y'all order these, I drill those holes small enough so that most of the two inch net cups that you get still fit in there. If I drill a little bigger, like just two inch, sometimes those, those net cups are like will fall right in. I drill a little smaller. I think my drill is like one and seven eighth is what I've been telling people. And that way, if you're just using the pool noodle like that, that's fine. And I, I like doing that because it just shows that's just the easiest way for everyone. But if you want to, I think I've seen some of your pictures that you guys have sent me. You know, some of you have the little net cups. You know, if you order from Amazon, um, it's at your doorstep like in no time. And they're they're not that expensive. And uh, what do you call it? If you want to try it with Hydroton, you know, you don't have to use pool noodle. You watch some other videos. And I, I use some Hydroton now and then too. some of the uh basil works real well in it um uh, i grow my swiss chard sometimes with it i put the i get the swiss chard from home depot lowe's transplants rinse off the roots and then it's a little heavier and i set it in there and i put a bunch of hydrogen around it and kind of holds it in place maybe stick a little pool noodle there if it's like a little wonky let's see t -t -t -t. grow micro dwarf okay yeah dwarf tomatoes yeah they don't take up as much space yeah, and, and that's why I grew, if you watch some of my videos, I grew Roma tomatoes too. You know, they grow kind of big. You can always top them off. And if you get like indeterminate or determinate, I forget which one is which. Somebody uh, corrected me on that one time. <laughs> but they don't grow like a vine. Uh, CB would know. How you doing, CB? We're talking about you in here. We're telling everybody when I grow up, I want to be just like Mike and grow me some awesome hydro. Mike for Prez. Cool. Appreciate it. I don't know if I want to take that on right now. There, there's a lot of stuff going on. You you guys staying safe? Um, CB, we were talking about you a little earlier. I was telling everybody to go in there and uh, check out your channel for all the cool stuff you got going on. You're getting your tomato garden uh, set up and everything. Starting carrots and beets in South, is that South Cali? Starting peas soon. Cool. Uh, I'm going to put a video about some peas too. I, you know, I grew the pea shoots and we didn't eat all and, and some of them grew a little big and I took the whole thing like an experiment because once it grows in here, you know, some of the roots go down into the container and, you know, if you're trying to pull them out and they get all uh, matted together, if they get too big. I took the whole thing and set it on top of a bucket. We're going to see how it grows. So I've got that like a little experiment. I'd like fish. I do aqu aquaponics. So you do do aquaponics, Thomas? Oh, if I like fish, okay, I'd do it. Yeah, that's what I, we were talking about. You know, um, my wife eats fish or whatever. And, and, you know, if we could do that, I would. But there's a lot more science that goes into it and, and, and watching things and, and measuring and uh, monitoring, you know, all the nitrate, nitrite levels. And, you know, I just, I just hate to, you know, be a slave to my garden or, or the fish. I grew a nice thyme plant from a cutting. Awesome. Yeah, cool. We, we have that out here too. Thomas, you don't have to eat the fish. 
Yeah, yeah, you can grow them. Uh, it's just you have to be responsible for them. You know, like I said, they're little living things. Fixing to fire the hydrometer, the mater house up. Oh, cool. Seatings will be big enough for the greenhouse. Awesome. Yeah, so if you guys on uh, CBs, which way is it? This way. If you're on YouTube, you can click on the little three dots and go right to his channel. But he's got a huge um, greenhouse. He's getting that uh, started. He says he's going to fire it up this weekend. And nothing but tomatoes. And it's with a uh, Dutch bucket system. Really cool. It's kind of like the crack key system, except it's in vermiculite and a little drip system. It comes out the bottom, all goes into a common drain and recirculates. Uh, it takes a little bit more care, and, and he tells you all about it. CB, we're also telling them uh, what a, an awesome couple uh, you two are. Whoa, that's a big comment. Can't see me. Only reason I got Fox Farm was because I had 48 baby green plants I wanted to get growing. Okay. I'm gacked to get my greens going and crack containers. Yeah, awesome. My microgreens are growing off. Are going on. Sunflowers and beets and cocoa coir, just water, a million sprouts going. Cool. Yeah, isn't it isn't that wonderful? Still trying to sneak all this wonderful green agent. Yeah. Yeah, that's one thing. If you get if you get your kids too. Uh, once in a while, just kind of watching and and messing around with it, getting their hands in there too. They they get a little interested. If you you plant some of them out too and have them plant with you, um, they'll like it. You're too kind, my friends. Nah, you guys are awesome. I said y'all y'all check them out. If you got any like technical questions, you know he he uh, can answer like technical questions like me. I'm just like this is going to be like cheap and easy, you know, and and uh, easy pleasy what you put just two old farts over here trying to grow some veggies some veggies you guys grow a, a ton of veggies i saw it uh and how many pounds of tomatoes did you get last year um if you watch it watch cb like the the whole year he'll weigh up like each time they harvest like me i'm like we grow some we grab them we pick them we eat them and we're going through them you know i never weigh anything yeah they actually harvest the stuff and weigh it and keep a running total all the way through uh, all the way through the year. I think they have a little contest too, where you can kind of guess um, how many are on there, how many pounds they grew. So what do we? Oh, an hour. I'm gonna get going. I think I've got another live stream coming up here real soon, guys. Hey, Cindy, how are you doing? But like I said before, we wrap things up. I just want to let you guys know that. Um, let me see if I got a picture here somewhere. Yeah, the downspouts that are like this, buy one, get one free. The downspouts, where is it? Like that. Um, they're getting kind of scarce around me. So this is going to be like the last chance. Uh, I've got enough for the orders that I've got right now. I've got that. And I'm having to go out farther and farther and farther in the radius around me to try and get them. And like I said, because of the crazy time that we're living in, um, it's getting, once we get back to normal, I don't know if they're going to put a high priority. Let me get myself back on. You know, they're going to be wanting to get, let people get food and toilet paper, you know, and uh, sanitizer and, and mask and all that stuff. They're getting groceries. They're going to, all those trucks are going to be carrying all that in. I don't know how much emphasis they're going to be putting on downspouts. So I'm either going to have to travel to get some or, and I only have a little Honda, so I can only fit so many in my car at one time. Or if I order them, I, there's no telling. So I hate for people to order it and take weeks. So I've got some right now. So from now, I think I got to sail on to the, the rest of this week. I'll, I'll pop on through the week. We're going to be doing some lives and playing some stuff out. Maybe even have a cooking show in the morning um, since we're all stuck at home. Um, I'll be doing, I'll be doing that. But right now, like I said, if you, you pop on the store, you know, it's down in the description. If it's there, then I still can get some. But when I have to travel too far to go get it, because, you know, we're not supposed to be traveling. We're going anywhere. So if I have to go like more than 10 miles or 15 miles, I'll probably just shut the store down. But um, that's temporary until like all of this nuttiness that's going on in the world, you know, kind of normalizes and we can get back to normal. So if it, if it does... I'll go ahead and um, if I shut down the store, it's not a permanent thing. It's just because I 
I don't want people ordering and then me going, well, you're going to have to wait two weeks or three weeks. You know, and even after I make it, then when I take it up, you know, they're, they're telling us that the mail's not guaranteed, you know, anymore too, because of all the stuff that's going on. Jamie, awesome live stream. Yeah. How are you doing? We're about wrapping it up over an hour here. And I'm going to have a, I got another live stream with another um, like creators that I, I talk to make YouTube videos. We've got another thing going on in a couple minutes here. So I'm going to have to pop off. This year we're aiming to beat yeah eight hundred pounds one year nailing it nailing it. okay cool yeah try to get a thousand pounds that'd be cool going to be a task with my small space but sure enough going to give it our best that'd be awesome so CB one year CB and Renee grew eight hundred pounds of tomatoes so if you guys want to see that going on check out his channel like I said I grow you know maybe ten or twenty pounds you know whatever we're eating Roma tomatoes. Um, if you want to see a bunch of tomatoes, different varieties too. It's awesome. Uh, check them out. Good thing I grabbed three. What did you get? Seven gallon totes. Yeah, Home Depot last month. Yeah. I uh, have eight heads of cracky romaine and some basil. Cilantro. Oh, cool. I love all that cilantro growing in my office. Awesome, Robert. That sounds cool. Mary Bunker. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. All righty, guys. I'm going to be wrapping it up. Um, if I missed any questions, uh, just keep your notifications on. I'll be popping on throughout the week. You know, now we're, you know, we're staying at home this week. We're all kind of self quarantined. Uh, I'll pop on a lot more, but I, I don't know what time I'm going to be popping on some mornings, maybe like some me, my wife's going to do like some cooking shows or make some juice. Everybody's asking about that. Um, and we'll pop in in the evening like this with just a green screen and just, just a little Q and a, but uh, once we get stuff growing too, uh, we're going to be doing live shows showing how to plan it, just going through it all like a live live stream, just like you're watching a, a live show on TV. So I think that'd be pretty cool. And if anybody ever wants to pop on the show, like I said, I popped the link in like earlier. I want to do that too. Once you guys get your gardens growing, I can pop a link in the chat. And if you guys aren't too shy, just call it with your phone. And if you don't want to use the video on your phone, you can just like aim the video out towards your garden and you can walk us around your garden and share it with everybody. So I'm going to get you guys to do that once I, you know, like I said, once things start to normalize a little bit. So let's see, we have a couple more things. Good night. Yeah. Good night. We'll catch you later, Robert. Appreciate it. No problem. Appreciate you coming in. Uh, my hydroponic Dr. Cracky vegetables are doing great, but the rats keep eating my vegetables. Yeah. That's one thing too, is just dealing with wildlife. We lived out on a farm and deer, raccoons, possums and everything. Susan, thanks, Mike. Yeah, cool. Yeah, cooking show. Awesome. Cool. Yeah, so kind of keep notifications on watch. I, I don't really know any times yet. I'm just going to experiment this week. And uh, when we find a good time where people, you know, I want to go on too early and everybody's still in bed. You know, I'm on the East Coast. So we're going to we're going to try and figure out something. Uh, if anything, we're just going to have fun doing it. Right. So you guys, I love you all. You guys are awesome for sharing everything. Like I said, I get messages from people around the world saying thank you. I've, I've never met them before, but it's because you guys share stuff. Um, you're changing, you're empowering people, growing your food. You know, that's a basic necessity of life. And you guys are helping people around the world empower themselves. That's an awesome thing. And like we said, the internet is what you make it. You know, we can say it's good or bad or complain or great, but the internet's what we put into it. And the more you guys, the more good you put in, it just, outweigh the negative and and maybe you know that's going to be a good thing so you guys always be good be kind and i love you lift inspire keep on growing and we'll catch you one day this week appreciate it and thank you to everybody who's bought any downspouts or or uh ebook or support me in any way or hit the applause button or, or anything i love you guys that you're you're helping me continue the channel and and helping everybody else that's a part of it too so appreciate you guys Keep on growing.